In today's video, we're going to talk about that. How do you make a really, really awesome bar chart? In particular, I'd like to talk about four specific elements that I'm going to touch upon. The first one is that how do you decide on the font size and spacing? The second one is that how do you remove any kind of junk and clutter from the chart in case that is not necessary? Number three is going to be about colors. How do you decide a good color and how do you contrast colors? And number four is going to be adding analytical value to your chart. All right, people, no further ado, let's go. All right, fellas, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have made a ridiculously simple bar chart right here. You can take a look that in the bar chart, I have product on the Y axis and a couple of uh, values here as bars. So if you take a look at the chart, in terms of values, I'm looking at total sales, which is nothing but my light blue bar and my dark blue bar is my sales of the last year. If you also happen to take a look at the tooltip, I have also provided growth over last year as a tooltip once you hover over the chart. This chart is absolutely fine, but let's just start to add a bit more finesse into the chart by increasing or decreasing the font size and working along with spaces. The first thing that I can see in this chart is that the labels, which are nothing but the names of the products are not clearly legible. What can I do about that? Maybe I can reduce the font size. So let's just do that. I'm going to click on the chart, go over to the format right here. In the format, I'm going to go over to, let's say, the Y axis. In the Y axis, I'm going to get rid of the nine font and maybe have an eight font. That's the least which is legible also. And somebody could also read it very easily on the screen. Even if I reduce the font size, you're going to see that my labels are still not really readable and they're still getting cropped. In case you would want to display the full label, what you can do is you can play around with the area width of the chart. What do I mean by that? This particular width right here, I can increase so that the entire label is displayed. How do I do that? I'm just going to click on the chart, go over to the format in the Y axis right here. I can have something like an area width, which I can right now it's 25%. I can make that as 100%. And what that is going to do is that is actually going to increase the width right here, which is going to make your entire label legible and probably even not getting cropped anywhere. The other mistake that I have seen a lot of people making is increasing the size of the bar phenomenally. So if you take a look at this chart, this chart is pretty readable. But if you happen to increase the size of the bar, although it does occupy more area, and if you're kind of dealing with the problem that you want to fill the area, this does solve that problem, but it looks kind of awkward. Now, the reason why I say that is because uh, if the bar would have been of this height, it still serves the same analytical purpose, still solves the same problem, still shows the same number as a larger bar would do. And it's just occupying more real estate in your canvas, in your dashboard, and it's not really adding any analytical value, a larger bar. So try to have smaller bars so much so that they are readable and legible, but not so much small that they are not even legible. That's another point. The other thing that you might want to explore in your bar charts is that you might also want to explore the inner padding between the two bars that you have. Let me help you understand. So let's just say that I draw a very simple bar chart and there are two bars within that. Now the bars are pretty fat right here and the inner padding is pretty less. Inner padding simply means the distance between the two bars. If I happen to increase the padding in between the two bars, the bars would actually get a little thinner and the padding is going to be increased and you'll have more white space within the bar, which is actually going to give you a slightly more cleaner chart. How do you do that? I'm just going to go over to the chart right here. Go over to the format in the format i have bars in the bars and i can say that i'd like to increase the padding inside once i increase the padding inside you can see that the bars have become slightly leaner still giving you the same value in terms of analytical value but you have more white space which is going to look cleaner and your chart is going to seem better part two removing junk from the chart in this section, we'll take a look at our charts critically and find out that what are those small elements in the chart which are creating noise in the chart and we can comfortably remove those elements from our chart without losing any analytical value. So let's just go over and take a look at this chart that we have been working with. And for now, I'm just going to add data labels to this chart because data labels are one thing that people prefer having in the chart rather than removing it. So for just a moment, I'm going to add the data labels and then talk about what can be removed. So I'm just going to go over to the chart, go over to the format in the format. I have data labels, which I'm going to turn it on just for a bit. The next thing that I can see in this chart is that I can clearly see that this chart talks about product and there is nothing else that talks about the product other than the names right here. So I can comfortably get rid of the product title right here. 
I can also get rid of the total sales and the sales last year title right here. Now, once I am having the data labels on top of every single bar, I can read the very data label right here and there is no point of having the the access right here. So I would not really refer this and match it somewhere here to get to know that the value is 375. I can read that on top of the bar. So there is no point of having the access. So let's just get rid of the three things. For now, I'm just going to click on the chart, go over to the format right here. I'm going to say in the Y axis, hey, I don't really want to have the title. So titles are off in the X axis as well. I don't really want to have the title and that is also off. I can also say that my entire x-axis is not needed and I can just get rid of that as well. So uh, the x-axis, where are you? Right here. And I can just turn that off as well. Now my chart starts to look a bit more cleaner in terms of giving us the insights as compared to current year sales and last year sales. Let's go work on the colors of this chart. Another very important aspect that adds finesse to your charts is the choice of the color. And I'd like to talk about that. If you take a look at my chart, my total sales and my sales last year, both are different shades of blue. Both are very high contrast colors. They are asking or seeking the attention of the user on both the data points, the current year sales and the last year sales. Let's just say that I would like to purposefully focus on the current year sales more than the last year sales. Can I do something about the color to reflect my intention that I would like to focus more on the current year? What I can do is I can diffuse down the color of the last year so that the attention obviously goes on the current year sales as compared to the last year sales. What I can do is in this chart right here, I can go over to the format and I can go over to the bars right here and I can diffuse the colors of the last year sales. One of the very easy choices to make is to go with gray and gray probably is going to be an easy pick because you don't really have to think about that what other color to choose in case you go with light pink or light yellow then you have to make other choices as to which color do I choose now which goes ahead with light pink or light yellow or any other diffused color so gray is just okay so I'm just going to go over right here and I'm going to pick up a light shade of gray and you can now see that just by the choice of a lighter color the intention is to focus on the current year sales and which is now getting highlighted because the color is high contrasting. The other thing that you're going to find a lot of times is that sometimes the labels are going to be pretty close to one another. So it could probably happen that you have two labels nearly of the same size and they're very, very close to one another and you're not able to decipher that which label belongs to which bar. What can you do about that? So what I can do is I can color the label as the color of the bar, which helps the user understand that this label belongs to which data point, which is very easy. I can just go over right here. I can go over to the uh, format right here. In the format, I am going to go with data labels. In the labels, I can select my total sales right here. Uh, and I can say for total sales, which is light blue in color. I'm also going to pick up uh, the blue shade of the thing. And just to give it a slight more highlight, I can also color, I can also choose the font as a semi bold font. And that is going to just increase a bit of a highlight on that. And that is a very simple choice of colors, which reflects my intention that user, please focus your attention towards total sales and not the last year. The last one, but perhaps the most important one, which is adding analytical value to your charts. Now, there are a lot of ways in which you can add more insights, more analytical value to the charts. But one of the ways that I really like and I admire and I tend to use it personally as well is improving the titles of your chart. If you happen to write lame titles like sales of product by month or sales of product current year versus last year or budget versus actuals by product. These are very lame titles and they don't really add a lot of insight. The title is just there that describes the chart. It's not really providing any analytical value that is beneficial for the user to read and take a look at. Now, rather than using a lame title, what I did was I wrote a bit of DAX to calculate that which product grew the maximum as compared to the last year and what has been the growth of the best selling product as compared to last year. So 30 ml protein hair oil grew by a whopping of 2100 percentage over last year. Now that could perhaps be a very, very important insight 
for the user to take a look at that what's the fastest growing product. Now, I happen to create some very simple tags, which is nothing but a conditional formatting title. And you can just maybe go through this. All that I'm doing is a bunch of calculations right here, trying to find out the growth percentage, trying to find out the product name and concatenating everything to just get a nice little title. Now that title actually goes in the title of the chart, which then I format, I color and I increase the size of this. Another very, very important thing to note is size is the factor of importance in any data visualization that you do. If you happen to increase the size of something that will or will not get attention depending upon the size of that particular object. So be intentional about the size and I'm absolutely being intentional about the size of the title here because I want the user to not really miss this insight and hence the size of that title. And now if you just take a look at this chart, this is a pretty good chart in terms of uh, all the formatting and the analytical changes that we have made and it looks pretty slick. Finally, if you happen to take a look at both the charts, the chart that we started with at the start and the chart that we ended up by making some subtle changes by adjusting the font size, the spacing, removal of the junk, adjusting the color and adding analytical value, you will appreciate that how far our chart has come along and looks neat and also gives incredible value to the reader. Let me know what you think about this and if you have any questions around this, I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout about my Power Query and my DAX training programs in case you are a beginner and you'd like to master the fundamentals first and then take your knowledge and your skills to the next level while learning Power BI and trying to solve sophisticated problems. I'd highly encourage that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.